Hello everybody and welcome to another top 5 board gaming video. Today's topic is all about dudes on a map, bro. As the name implies, dudes on a map means that you've got a big map in the middle of the table, people sitting around it, and a bunch of miniatures that are sitting on the map. In this particular category, for me at least, I like to see games that have not only the miniatures moving around claiming territory, engaging in combat, and all that kind of thing, but also some kind of economic aspect as well as a negotiation and diplomatic triad as well going on. I really love to see those types of things, whereas in something like a standard skirmish game it's just like one versus one or whatever pew 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 there's not any real negotiation or anything like that whereas dudes on a map you've got a bunch of people so there's a lot that can go on that said this is an enormous category and one could argue that pretty much any game can fit into this in some way shape or form so I'm really curious what you all have to say what are your personal favorites let me know in the comments but with that we are gonna get started right off with my number five <laughs> At number five, I've got Axis and Allies. This is probably one of the original examples of this style of board game, where you have the aforementioned Axis powers and Allied powers during World War II. This basically steps it up from something like Risk, where in this case, you've got a lot more different units, you've got a lot more political intrigue, negotiation amongst the team members, as well as between the two sides. And you know, that, that's sort of like brinkmanship and things like that of when are they gonna attack, how are they gonna attack, where are they gonna go? And I really, really love that. The reason it's so low on the list, though, is because the political and negotiation aspects are a little bit lower down on the list, as is the economic aspect. It is still there, don't get me wrong, but I would like to see it a little bit more forward with that. In addition, the game can become a little bit grindy, especially if you're playing with folks who are not like basically people who enjoy reading and learning about World War II and the like. Histor history buffs and people like that are much more likely to enjoy the game and be able to sit through an entire session though. Axis and Allies overall though, my number five. <laughs> At number four, I've got Kemet, the game that takes place in ancient Egypt. The main reason that this is a little bit higher than Axis and Allies for me personally is that it takes the idea of the social, cultural, and those aspects of the game and bumps them up a notch. In this case, you're trying to power up your pyramid. You also get some unique cards that indicate like favor of the gods and stuff like that. In addition to the fundamental idea of you need to go out, claim territory, and attempt to destroy your opponent's pyramids in order to win the game. I'm also a huge fan of Egyptian mythology, so this game is right up my alley. It's a ton of fun. I really like it. Kemet, my number four. At number three, I've got Cyclades, the game that takes place in ancient Greece. So this is a little bit higher than Kemet because I like Greek mythology more than I like Egyptian mythology, but also because the two games really do have very similar mechanics, and that's probably because they come from the exact same company. Essentially, in this particular game, you've got a lot more in the way of dealing with ocean creatures and things like that, so you can summon the Kraken, and of course, as with Kemet, you can get favor from the gods and all of that kind of thing. So I find it to be a little bit more versatile in terms of what you can do and interact with, but you still have the political, economic, and negotiation type aspects going on with this game. It's still a bunch of fun just like Kemet is. I absolutely love it. Cyclades, my number three. At number two, I've got Rebellion. This is by far my favorite Star Wars game and one of my favorite asymmetric games of all time. It's only a two-player game, and the idea is one person is playing as the Rebellion, the other one is playing as the Imperials. I love that the gameplay styling is so so different between the two sides. The idea is that the Imperials are trying to massively ramp up their production so that they can go and explore as quickly as possible and try to crush the Rebels, while the Rebels are trying to make strategic strikes against the Imperials and essentially hopefully lead them away from the base. You've got a lot of really interesting aspects here where you've got tactical uh, selections as far as what leaders you're going to send. If you're going to send any leaders into a particular combat, you've got specific goals that you're trying to achieve. You've got a constantly swaying sort of victory track in terms of who's going to win at what time. And it's just an absolutely amazing game. And you've got miniatures all over the place. Of course, it takes place in the Star Wars universe as well. So it's giant nerding out time. Wonderful game, absolutely fun to play. And I really love it. Rebellion, my number two. At number one, I've got Rising Sun, the game that's about 
Japanese mythology. Effectively, this game is very simple at its core, where you've got different territories on a map and you're trying to control them. Specific territories will essentially give you a particular bonus towards winning the game at the end of a round. And throughout the game, you'll be getting new cards, new powers, be able to control new creatures that represent uh, particular creatures, monsters, deities from Japanese mythology of all different sorts. In addition, all of the clans that you're able to play as have their own unique abilities of some sort, so you have some great asymmetric gameplay going on. In addition, I love the alliance system that this game has, where everybody gets a small token that you can sort of link together with another person's token to indicate that for that round at least, the two of you are going to be allies. And it's just really, really interesting how it does that, as well as making you decide when to spend your money, how to spend it, and all that sort of thing. You've got a blind bidding mechanic to help resolve combat, all sorts of different stuff. It's just a very elegant, well-designed game that is a ton of fun and has a lot of really fascinating information about Japanese mythology. Rising Sun, my number one. Well, everybody, that's going to be it for me. I hope that you enjoyed this video on my top five favorite dudes on a map style of board games. Now, I will say I love Norse mythology, but I do not like Blood Rage. I don't know how many of you are expecting it, but I'm not a big fan of it personally. That said, again, this is a massive category and you can describe it or interpret it in a lot of different ways. What constitutes a map? What constitutes a dude? What constitutes the dude sitting on the map? Not to mention the idea of the economy versus negotiation versus all of these other different things. How can you define that? And more importantly, how do you personally define it? Let me know anything and everything in the comments below as far as your favorites, your least favorites, and how you view the genre in general. Let me know because you know I love to hear it all. That said, if you haven't done so already, please take a look at my various social media pages where you can interact with myself and my channel in a whole Whole bunch of really fun ways. If you are still under coronavirus lockdown as well, please stay safe. Please stay hunkered down. I hope that you're all healthy as well. And hopefully we're eventually going to get through all of this. But with that, thank you very, very much again for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.